Hey, I love your energy, and I'm very thankful that God just do what he do. For sure. God, really, I got to thank God. That's what I would say, because he put me in the presence of people I really admire, and that's cool. Right. Sometimes, yeah, that's just cool. Yeah, this is cool. Like I said, when I told him, God do a million things to do one thing, or he do one thing to do a million things. And I will always say that, because God been so good. And never, always be thankful. And I said this the other day in Grace Report, the period, you at. You know what I'm saying? You can't go back into the past and you can't go to the future. Because that's what you're going to regret. Yeah. Because you're going to regret it. 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 you know what i am saying you can not go back into the past and you can not go to the future i am going to regret it you know what i am saying you can not go back into the past and you can not go to the I bumped into Tannis, and he also do music um, at the library. Actually, we met at the library. I'm picking up some books because I like to read. It's good to read. Never, I say because I don't hear much people talking about this. So if you see a book, pick it up. Try to read it. If you don't know a word and you pass by, type it in your phone. Look it up on a dictionary. You know, um, see what it's about. You know, it's always good to keep learning. Never stop. Never stop expanding. You know, because the mind is a powerful thing, and don't let that go to waste. Because they're already trying to dumb us down. So um. Keep entertaining yourself and keep fulfilling yourself with knowledge and keep getting to know yourself and know who you are and where you're going. That's important information. Yes. We need to have you back already, I could tell. But I'm going to try to go into some deeper concepts and just really let people get a real right in-depth, mm -hmm. you know, experience, you know, on your views, all say. Like, as far as, like, the whole coronavirus right now, did yeah. you, would you take a vaccine? That's a good topic. Um, for real, you know. That's a question I'd rather not get into right now. Not right now? Not right now. Not so early right now. Um, but I say for everybody, just be cautious because I know people who have took it close to me. I know people who haven't. Either way it goes, it's your choice. Um, it doesn't matter. But I would say um, definitely do your research and... Um, yeah, I don't know too much to say. Okay, well, I, I'll go in a little bit. Like me, I feel like it's a lot of misinformation about the whole mm -hmm. thing right now from both sides, from the people that's against the vaccine and the people that endorse the vaccine. Right. Neither one of them are just flawless. Like, they're just telling you all truth. The government is not telling you all the truth. The people who are against the vaccine are not telling you all the truth. Mm -hmm. So I would say, who can you really trust right now? You need to do your own research. Yeah, I agree with that. And, you know, pray. That matters. And, like, be careful. Like, the government has hurt people before. But, but, and before this, you said in one of your lyrics, you said they've been a killer before the coronavirus. So if you think about that, that just tells you to put your trust into God. And if he ain't dangling all your steps already, to so just keep going and go with your flow. Whether you meditate, whether you pray, just care. connect with the creator and keep going. Don't worry about the ill or the wickedness just going around you, you know. Exactly. Like, you got to get to a point where you like, where, you know, you just trust in something greater than just what you can see. And that matters. Like, you know, people go to AA classes, they teach them to trust in a power higher than themselves. Mm -hmm. That matters. The only way you can, like, really break through in life with real adversity is with a higher power, with God. Some people choose Satan. Some people choose Buddha. Some people choose Allah. You know what I'm saying? But either way, you're going to have to get into that world at some point gotta get in that world and I think ironically that's how you know life is about God because the coronavirus did make people wonder about God more people start thinking about what the meaning of life but let me touch in on that too um I think God just showed people that you also didn't have to go to church because everything was set down and everybody was isolated so that made you have church at your house and you was online watching church service and you could still feel the presence, you know, the Lord. And that just shows you that you have God everywhere you go and you take him with him. And he's, you don't never just have to go to a church house to visit God. Uh, he's everywhere, all around the world. He's king, king of all, you know. He's the beginning, the last, and the middle. So. Yeah, I agree with that. I agree with that. Like, coronavirus made motherfuckers. Start thinking about God more. Yeah, but and you was in a house praying, and you can feel the Holy Spirit. You see a lot of like a lot of saints and stuff like that. Like they think you God only spoke in one language. You know, He spoke in several different languages. You know, so it kind of cut out a lot of a lot of bullshit too. But it also 
brought up a lot of bullshit. A lot of stuff had died, but a lot of stuff must become new, you know? So yes. when things die, it's not a bad thing. It's a good thing, you feel me? I look at as old things go, new things must come. So that's how I keep going through my life because everything, I'm not going to keep everything. If everything is temporary, I just, I keep going. You know. No matter what hit you, no and matter you know what, what knock me down. I noticed that our black women yeah. have to do that so much. Have to. <laughs> they have to learn to bear a lot mm -hmm. fast. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Especially with like the molestations, mm -hmm. the the um, you know, negative influences teaching women to have sex too fast. Yeah. You know, that's trauma. Yeah. Like some girls have sex and it's trauma. You know, I learned, I met a lot of girls, they was like, Yeah, my first experience was this, something terrible. Right. You know, I'm like, damn, that shit is terrible. But and the art, and then they have kids, and they gotta be the single parent a lot of times. They gotta be in the corporate world as a woman and a single woman with kids. So you there, you need your money. But so, as you say, the single woman with kids, that goes back to them having a choice too and everything. And that's because they wasn't taught right. They only go by what they was taught. And and with the old generation, what they was taught, it doesn't apply to today's world because everything has changed. So a lot of times you got to get a new thinking. And they choose they choose these baby daddies because their mama had these type of baby daddies. Or these abusive cycles because they continue the cycles from that. I'm, I'm going to tell you, though. I'm going to yeah. tell you what happened with my mama. Yeah. I'll just put it like that. My mother was from Cleveland, born in Cleveland, right? Mm -hmm. I'm not born in Cleveland. Right. I was born in Washington State. Mm hmm my mom, when she was like 18, she didn't want to go to college, so she decided to join the army, I think, right? Right. And that's when she met my dad. Mm hmm And she had me when she was like 19, 20. Right. In a different state. Because when she joined the army, they sent her out. Mm hmm Um, my mother didn't even succeed in the military. She got put out of the military. Okay. For real. They call it a dishonorable discharge. Mm hmm When you don't do well right okay but anyways you know when my dad my dad told me the story years later my mom told me that my dad was cheating and he had another woman but mm -hmm. the truth was my mother was struggling with her stability mentally mm -hmm. right? right right my dad told me like one day he went to college and uh he came home and he saw me like on the balcony they stayed in apartments and mm -hmm. i was on the balcony right. like the second floor and um, my mom wasn't watching me, and I kind of started playing on the, the gate, mm -hmm. the little barricade, and I, I fell from the second floor down. Right. To the bushes, though, I didn't get hurt. And he was like, um, you know, you was fine. But it made me think, like, your mom is not stable to watch you. And I wanted to separate from her and take you and go right. away from her. And she wasn't having that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mom and I had to take out her. And left in the night. Mm. And that's how the story of my whole situation came to be. Mm. I would have been a totally different person if I would have been with my dad. No, but it be like that because the parents not healed, and you know you carry that shit on. That you like the cycles. That's like what you were saying, and you gotta break those cycles. And I'm glad you know that though, so you won't continue that with your, you know, your generation. See, my generation got a whole new problem. You know what I'm saying? But yes, I'm I, from well, the so lessons I've learned. So what's the problem for this generation? And what did you? How did you apply those past experience to this generation? Or did you was it naive and left oh, up man. problems? Man, that's a deep situation because I have a baby's mother, right. and it's a serious situation. I have a little girl, and it's it's so serious. Like her life, everything is so like all the details of her life is right. so precious. Right. It's it's a different world, right. and also, um, you know. I have lessons I learned from what my parents did, mm -hmm. but it's new shit that they, my parents did not face that I'm dealing with too. Right. I'm a black father. Mm. My mm. dad was not black. You know what I'm saying? I didn't join the army. He did. Right. He got certain benefits from the military I don't get. Right. You know what I'm saying? I'm a nigga who said I'm going to start my own business. I'm going to start it from the gut. Right. Yep. So my path is different. Right. <laughs> So his path is different. So, I mean, information for the baby fathers, because it's a lot of baby fathers that's hurting to this day, is going through a lot of problems with the baby mamas. And what could you give the gentlemen, these young kings out here to help them heal, to keep same through this? Because I know when men have babies, like, th those those are very special moments, and you're not a part of it, you know, or got problems going on with it. I don't, what would you? Honestly, I need the advice. 
Mm -hmm. I don't really got the advice. I can act like I got the advice. I don't. Okay. Really, I just ask God, God, please help me give give the advice to me because I don't got the advice. Right. Well, like you know, what God said in the Bible is to uh, multiply, right? He did say that. Um, because one day they're going to be off and they're going to be just like you, you know, have a family, go off and do their own world. So I tell man, like, see, they get stuck in the emotional thing because there's something new and it's their seed. You feel what I'm saying? So now they're stuck and all they can see is this child. Like, I want to be, dang, how would it be just, you know, it's just so many thoughts. I don't know how a man really feel deep down, but I know they feel because they be hurt. Like, I know I this was is. There. I was there when my baby was born. Yeah. It was, it was. It was. It was not comparable to any feeling in the world. Yeah. I had a lot of experiences, but compared to like uh, my birth child right. in the hospital and I'm with my baby's mother and she's sitting there looking miserable, bad. Yeah. And I just see my little baby with the little beanie on. Yeah. And I was just, I barely, I, I it didn't feel real. It felt like when you're in a dream. Yeah. It felt like that. You got a new thing. That's what's up. I got kicked out the hospital when my baby got born. Why? Because the nurse was teaching my baby how to breastfeed, right? Mm -hmm. To suck the nipple. Mm -hmm. And um, the technique she was using, she was pushing the back of the head toward the nipple and shit, right? Mm -hmm. And my baby was crying. She wasn't doing it. Man. And she was like, I'm, I'm like, ma'am, can you take it a little easy? I don't feel like that's safe. Like her neck was moving a little bit. Right. I'm like, I'm like uh, ma'am, is there a different technique you could use? Right. She's like, no, we do have to teach them to take the nipple. You know right, what I'm saying? Right, we got to right, push right. it. Right. I said, ma'am, I'm asking you politely, yeah. please change your technique. I'm, sure. I'm telling you as the father of that child, I don't um, condone this. I don't consent to that technique. Use right. a different one. She was like, well, if I have to call security, I will. You know what I'm saying? I said, man, well, you going to have to find, go ahead and do that because I'm right. not trying to threaten you at all, but I don't agree with that technique. Did the mother agree too? No, the mother, my baby's mother got the flipping on me. Mm. Tennis, what is wrong with you? You blah, 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 blah. Right. I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, man, I'm like, baby. Right, right. You're like, baby, I'm just trying to help. I don't like what the lady is doing. And you got to consent She to pushing hard. Yeah. I ain't like how she was rub my baby head into yeah. the nipple like that. No, that makes sense. If you, yeah, I understand. I that. said, ma'am, just try a different technique for now. Right. She said, well, this is the way we got to teach them to like attach to the nipple and uh, you know adapt to it. I'm like, no, ma'am. I'm I'm telling you politely. This is the last time I'm gonna tell you. I don't condone this method. Please right. stop. Please stop. Right. She was like, well, I'm I'm gonna alert security. I'm like, well, go, we might as well go ahead and do it's that. It's crazy, and the mother ain't stick up for you. you see? The mother did not stick no, up no, for no, you. No, no, no. You need more mothers like that, and I feel like the father should always have a consent, just as the mother. You feel mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Because when you become, especially when a child become in a relationship, like y'all become one for that child, whether y'all become one for each other or not, that doesn't matter. Y'all become one for a child, and if look before you do that, what? She, if she watched this, uh -huh. she will destroy me for it. Oh. So I'm going to just say thank you. You right. Right. Because when, if she try to hear this, she like, oh. Well, we this can is, chop it. We can chop it. Yeah, we're going to have to chop we something. We're going to chop it. We're going to chop it. But, but look, wait. I, I'm going to say, look, it's all good. But, you know, God bless her. Right. We'll put it like that. Right. It's yes. all love. Yes. And people, look. For the baby's fathers out there, do I have advice? No. But do I believe in God? Yes. So I think you should do that. That's the best advice I can give Amen. you. Amen. But, but really, it ain't no saving us. This the painful thing niggas got to accept. We might have to, we might have to like go down for our children. Hold on. That's a painful thing we have to accept. Let me sit down beside real quick because it's so fucking wet out here. And I tune this guitar myself, y'all. Hold on, hold on. Okay, let's exit out because I'm finna dip.